Hello, welcome back to another episode of Fly Me to the Philippines. From our home in Cagayan de Oro. Today, everyone, we're going to bring you to Camp John Hay in Baguio. And not just that, but we're also going to bring you to so many places we've been to in Baguio. We've been home for three weeks, and we took everybody on our journey to Iloilo. We interviewed Michael from That Philippines Life. We went to Makati, Makati and we met your sister and your cousin there. And we met mm -hmm. one of our subscribers, Peter, who kind of joined us on some of our escapades. Mm -hmm. And then we met Manuel and his fiance that he met online using his frame, our German friend, our German giant, and we shared with people a video that says Baguio, but it really was an interview with uh, our subscribers, Peter and Manuel. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't show people Baguio. We didn't show them the types of excursions and the types of day trips and the beauty of Camp John Hay. We went back to Cebu City and we explored and wow, we discovered the IT park and what a great place that is to kind of just sit and see if you can meet some people. And we came back to Cagayan de Oro. So now we've got a little housekeeping to do. We've got to go back three weeks in time or two weeks in time and show people Camp John Hay and show people what Baguio is really all about, not just uh, that uh, interview that we did. Yes, and today we will find out if you could live in Baguio. So ba what, what, what do you think of Baguio overall? Overall, it's a really beautiful place. Mm, really a very attractive place to go because of its climate. And also, there's a lot of things that you can see there. I really like how the vegetables there and fruits very are very cheap. cheap. Well, we saw yes. baskets of strawberries, three for 100 pesos. Yes, yeah. it's very cheap. And Manuel, his fiance, who's got two master's degrees, went to a university in Baguio, mm -hmm. and she knew her way around, and we spent a day exploring. You know, what's interesting about Baguio is they have some government offices. They have some, uh, um, the Supreme Court is located in Baguio. Uh, some of the government of the Philippines has offices in Baguio and also there was an army base in Baguio which is now Camp John Hay, a big tourist attraction we're going to share. But uh, the really wealthy Filipinos, it's sort of their summer capital. It's high up in the mountains. It's only an hour and a half down the mountain to the beach in mm -hmm. La Union, uh, which is a kind of a nice surfing beach. and. Uh, it, it's very, people recommended to us that we try and include it in our trip. We missed it this time, but we're going to have to try and make it. So it's got the mountains and the beautiful, beautiful climate, but you can get to the beach. Now the drive back up the mountain might take more than an hour and a half mm -hmm. and burn a little gas, but it's just an hour and a half down the mountain to the beach. So it's got a lot going for it. Yeah. Like, um, I can't really say that our stay there was really good and stick around because we're gonna share with you our airbnb that we stayed in baguio and we're gonna make some a little bit of feedback in there yeah and so that people will have an idea of where to rent or you know where to stay in baguio mm. actually at the very first day of being in baguio I don't really feel it that we're in Baguio because right. we're just staying in the in the hotel right. or the, our Airbnb. We went to the mall, which is SM Mall, which is the only biggest mall I think in Baguio. I think there's a small mall in the center yes. of town down the mountain. Yes, yeah. but I think it, it's SM Mall is like the highlights there it's, because of its yeah. terrain. It, 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 there is this SM Mall on the top of the hill. And there's kind of crazy traffic winding around to get to it. There's a lot of traffic, especially yes, on the weekend is. in Baguio, which is sort of a negative. But this SM Mall was spectacular, and they had these open terraces, and the wind just comes blowing through. Uh, but you could sit outdoors, and like there were dozens of restaurants that had spectacular views. And uh, we're, we're going to show that at the end. We're going to show that SM Mall. So stick around for that, and you'll see the views from up there over the lake. So, Chrissy, we uh, finally got our tourism act together mm -hmm. late I, I think it was our third full day there third, yeah uh, we had uh, previously like you said uh, met our subscribers and became friends and we went to restaurants and we didn't really do anything touristy but uh, Manuel's girlfriend she arranged for uh, a driver and uh, we met at uh, Camp John Hay 
and boy, what a beautiful, and so one of, one of our other subscribers had written to me and said, you gotta go, you know, maybe you might wanna stay in Camp John Hay. And I would recommend staying in Camp John Hay. Um, yeah. We met at this coffee shop, but one of the first things we did, Chrissy, we went to go see this gorgeous resort. Like, it looked like a five-star resort. We didn't go in the lobby, but you'll see we walk up to the resort. Oh, yeah. It was so beautiful, like a manor house or something, but it was so beautiful. I can't even imagine. I mean, in the Philippines, maybe it was only like 135 US mm -hmm. dollars a night, but that's double or triple the price of everywhere else. Yeah. So my observation in that place, in, area, in that area, Camp Jen Hay, it's very quiet and very modern, actually. Yeah. And, um, good, good yes, infrastructure, the, nice the, sidewalks. The weather is very good. Oh, after we went to visit this gorgeous resort, which, you know, if money's no object, that's the place to stay. Mm -hmm. But we walked and we saw the most beautiful go golf course, Chrissy. It made me want to golf. I know it made you want to golf too. I know, I we know. We should have made a day to golf while we were there. It, it just for me, it's just like a perfect place to golf because it's not too hot. Yeah, it was to so be green. It was, was so, so green, green and clean. And clean. Green and clean. And we've been golf. We, we, before we went on this trip, we had golfed uh, in May and April, the real hottest months of summer here in the Philippines, those two months. And boy, oh boy, it was like after 18 holes here in the Bukinan Mountains, uh, getting, you know, just brutalized by the sun. It just mm -hmm. looks so inviting. So we met our friends up at, uh, well, we took our friends. We actually filmed that interview that was on our previous Baguio yes. video, and we made it up to a Starbucks. The clubhouse of the golf course has a Starbucks. You know, it's the Philippines, but there's Starbucks everywhere. Mm -hmm. There's a Starbucks. Yeah, it's a Starbucks. I'm gonna go get something refreshing at Starbucks. Did we get something for that? No, I'm good, thanks. Yeah. A plug? No, I mean, should we get some advertising? I need enough. Taxi's here. Taxi's here. Okay, we're gonna go for a ride around. We took, we rented a taxi for an hour for 350 pesos. And we met uh, the driver that uh, Manuel's girlfriend arranged for us. And off we went to Centennial Botanical Garden. Yeah, I really like that garden because everything there is alive. You know, like in the middle of El Nino, in a very hot season of the year in the Philippines, you can still see these flowers blooming and so green. They're, they are very, uh, very well taken you care You know, of. Uh, the Philippines, you can grow anything. If you have a piece of, you put it in the ground, it grows. The soil here is crazy yeah. rich. And then you get the climate from Baguio, yes. where you get these cool temperatures and lots of rain. And it's just, so the botanical garden was just flush with plants and it was really beautiful. They had these native weavings and native costumes. We gave you yes. a little glimpse of it, but here you can see Chrissy where she's getting dressed by the vendor and then she's gonna do a little bit of a native uh, routine uh, dance for you and show off. I, I love watching yeah, her in that costume. Actually, actually, before we went, before we planned to go to Baguio, because last year we planned, but it was canceled. Yeah, we had a flight canceled. So, since that time, I was like thinking, that is my goal. When I get to Baguio, I really want to experience um, wearing those native um, outfits. I think Performing I can put a stamp there, like goal accomplished. <laughs> goal accomplished, yeah. It was, I'd never seen you try on a native costume before. Anyway, we walked all over this botan botanical garden. It was a little hilly. Uh, it was full of people, even though it was a weekday, I believe. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a wonderful time. And then uh, she took us to another place where we went down and saw these giant horses and... Uh, the it pink was horses. The pink, well, no, that was Mines View. Yeah, so the next oh, yeah. place that we have film of, we went to what's called Mines View. It's an abandoned old mining shaft, maybe up high in the mountains, mm -hmm. and it had spectacular views. And it looked like this canyon here behind us a little bit. Um, you know, we're quite fortunate. We're living only at 500 feet of elevation, but we have okay. this canyon. Now it's quite green. We've had rain for two weeks. It looks so different. It's so green. Oh, yeah, yeah. so you, green now. I just now, looking at it I just, myself. I can't realize I just it. noticed. It used to be all brown in there. But anyway, we have this wow. canyon, and this Mines View Canyon looked a lot like ours. There was a pink horse up there. And it was just the, and that's what Baguio is full of views. When you go to Baguio, mm -hmm. You'd be hard pressed to rent an Airbnb that didn't have a view or stay someplace that didn't have a view. Chrissy, what do you remember most about Mines View? The pink horses. The pink horses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you forget that the pink horses, the giant dogs. And the strawberries, three yeah, for the, the 100 pesos. Yeah, the strawberries are very cheap. Yeah. And also the, you know, the colorful houses in the hillside. Yeah, so we drove. And we didn't quite capture it, but there were some, you'd catch, it looked like Sausalito with the hill, like hundreds and hundreds of homes, like just 
built into the hillside. Yes. You could, at night, you could see the city like views, but I tried to capture some of it. Here you are, we are driving across town, and you, you'll get a sense of, you know, the roads are actually quite good in Baguio. Mm -hmm. All over the Philippines, the right-hand lane is pretty much unusable. You might jump into it for 100 meters or 200 mm -hmm. meters, but very quickly there'll be a tire in the road, there'll be a dog in the road, there'll be a sorry, sorry stores, customers in the road. They're all over the Philippines, the right-hand lane is, is kind of a joke. But in the Baguio, you the right-hand lanes like Iloilo were clear, mm -hmm. and there are two and three lane roads, windy, steep roads. You can see us driving across town. You can get some glimpses of the houses in the hills. Yes. Um, and we made our way across town to a really interesting site called the Ur Ogot Ur Ogot Igorot. Igorot. Uh, what was it called? The Igorot. The Igorot Stone Kingdom. The Igorot Stone Kingdom and, and the, gold mine. Gold mine. The ingot, like we would say ingot in the West, maybe in English. Ingot. I think that Igorot is ingot or something ingot? like that. Maybe, well, or is it a native people? I can't yeah, tell. Yeah, it's a native people. Ah, Igorot. Manuel and uh, his uh, fiance and uh, Chrissy and Peter and I, and we climbed all over. And there are hundreds, and maybe I mean, there's got to be a hundred thousand stones they yes. used to build this place. Quite interesting, quite beautiful views, and we climbed all over there. They had statues that you could pose with, and uh, we went all the way up to being Westerners. We went to the top and used the snack bar. On the way in, you got the taro sticks. What is it? What yeah, is it? Ta yeah, taro? actually taro, yeah. Taro, yeah, like actually, a root. Actually, it's, a, it's, it's my first time to taste really? uh, taro that was used. seasoned. It's fried, like something fried, something fried like that. Seasoned, yeah, we yeah. use taro, but you know, we, we put it in the vegetables yeah. together, like vegetable stew or vegetable yeah. soup. Hmm. But that's the first time I tried that taro, and it was really yeah. good. It's just like French fries, but there's a little bit taste yeah, there yeah. that is different. Must have given you the fuel because Chrissy went climbing up <laughs> and I, well, you can see her, she's running around the place up at the high end and yes. uh, you ran all over that place. Yes, because you cannot really get easily tired because um, the, the, the weather is really, really good there. Yeah. It's not, there's sun, but you can still feel the cold wind and the fog, so it's, it's, it's good. Yeah, it, it was a really great day. I felt like it was a full day of excursion. Yeah. Um, if you get the chance, I highly recommend you spend a day at Camp John Hick. We almost booked an Airbnb on, I thought it was farther away from town. Mm -hmm. And there's the taxis in Baguio, it's really interesting. Most of them are SUVs or minivans. Um, and they're cheap. They're really cheap. They start 35 pace. Here we start yeah. 40. There they start 35. And even if you're in traffic, they don't go anywhere. You're not really covering any kilometers. So when mm -hmm. you get there, it's like, was so cheap. We were 15, 20 minutes in a taxi. It was like 275 US. Yeah. So cheap. So I would stay in Camp John Hay is not that far away. I thought it was going to be farther and it would be like a expensive taxi ride in and out of town and the the places you can get there are a little pricier too but uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's peaceful up there it's quiet yeah. the it's really nice so we highly recommend that after we spent a day we ended up um at the mall and we ended up eating korean barbecue mm -hmm. and uh, i don't think manuel had ever eaten korean barbecue uh, um, yeah, all, all you can eat, all you can eat Korean yeah, barbecue. He, he yeah, and, you know and shabu shabu. Uh, what, what's the name of that restaurant? Tong uh, Yong. Tong Yang. Tong Yang. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, um, one thing that really amazed me of Baguio is that taxis. There's a lot of taxis that there don't use a ACs. Oh, a there's, yeah, no AC. Yes, and the hotels and Airbnbs yeah. they don't have AC, yeah. of course. Yeah. But yeah. just first time, like this is the Philippines. There is no heat or AC in Baguio, I don't think. It's like one of those microclimates, you just don't use it. Yeah. Uh, I think some people need the heat certain times a year. Mm -hmm. um, we ended up uh, at Peter's uh, small little mini home, A-Frame, and we yes. showed a little bit of that on the last video with the beautiful city light views. Yeah, actually, if you know, if, if we're going to get a chance to go back in Baguio, I really want to rent one of those A-Frame yeah. uh, Airbnbs. It looked really, fun. Yeah, it looked fun. It's, it's a little it's small. It's really nice. It's small. You it's could good hit your for, head on the stairs. Yeah, it, it's good for for a couple or yeah, maybe a solo a traveler. Solo, yeah. yeah, but a couple would do. It was nice. Yeah, it was nice. And then we'll re we showed you previously our Airbnb, but we'll show it to you again real quick. And, uh, you know, one of the things I want to mention is you got to be really, really careful when you rent an Airbnb in the mm -hmm. Philippines because, Chrissy, what is it with Filipinos? They don't like to give feedback. Well, me, myself, I don't really give feedback. Like, Why? I don't, I don't Why? write feedback. Why? Because um, you're afraid of hurting are, someone's we're feelings. Into, we're not not really, but we are really into helping each other. Like we don't really um, make things that can uh, uh, that can affect the other to go down. So for us, we like consider. We're very considerate. So I rented this Airbnb. It had 50 reviews. 
five stars. I always say <laughs> 4.85 or higher and uh, 15 or more reviews, read every review. So it, it, was, it was exactly as it was pictured and it had this amazing river of clouds that would come through. But yeah. there was a breeding, nice. there was a dog breeding operation with 50, 100 dogs, maybe 100 meters behind us. They were barking all night long, they were barking all day. And you know, not one, I read all 50 reviews, everyone five stars. Mm -hmm. Chrissy, no one said anything about the dogs, but when I mentioned to the taxi that we were, uh, we had a lot of dogs, mm -hmm. he asked us how our hotel was. I said it was great, uh, the mm -hmm. condo in the hotel, but uh, there were dogs keeping us awake. He said, oh yeah, there's a breeding operation back there. Right. And when the owner of the Airbnb read, I gave her her first four star <laughs> review, and like I'm, I could have given it less, but mm -hmm. just four stars. And I mentioned the dogs were, you know, persistent. She wrote back that she'd never heard. No one ever mentioned to her about the dogs. It could be. Maybe she doesn't yes. stay in there herself. And no Filipino ever decided to mention that the dogs bark all night long. Yeah. You know what? I think that place is perfect if you're well, going to remove. Am I lying? You know, people think I'm a little hysterical No, no, here. you're not lying. Like, <laughs> the dogs are really crazy. And it will, like, go off every midnight or yeah. even uh, very early in yeah, the morning, very like 4 a. 3 a.m. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even 3 a.m. Yeah. Like, there's um, there's one point there that I can, me, myself, I'm a Filipina, but I can hardly sleep right. because of yes, the yes, dog yes, noise. Yes, yes. But, you know, the, 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 the the location was it's, good. It's, the view was really good. good. The view was good. Actually, when I when I look at the the Airbnb photos that the owner provided, yeah. what we've witnessed there is like more than what yeah, we see on the yeah, picture. Yeah. It was just the noise. It's yeah. not, it was just the noise. And also, you must be careful also because there's a lot of Airbnbs that doesn't allow you to cook inside. Yeah, I, I was moving too fast, and it said no uh, dried fish to be mm -hmm. cooked. Okay, well, you know, I don't allow that here in our house either because, yeah. boy, does that smell. But it, there was no cooktop. There was no pots and pans. And, oh, my God, we we just, I rushed right past that. Yeah. I didn't even notice it in, when I read it. And also, yeah. it is a total no-smoking city. Yeah, you can't, you're not, they really very, they don't want you smoking outside. Yeah. No burning of garbages. Yeah. No maybe using of firewoods yeah. when you cook. So it's really, um, they, they, they uh, like, they preserve the good nature of the city because yeah. that is how they attract people, their nature, they're not going to ruin it. Concerns. So let's talk about this mega mall up on top of the hill. They have, oh. of all the malls I've ever been into the in the Philippines, I, I kind of like this one the best. Mm -hmm. The open design, uh, you know, people go to the malls in the Philippines for the air conditioning. Here, the breeze is just, it was a little too cold at one point mm -hmm. at four or five in the afternoon. You know, you, maybe I should have brought a jacket. The wind was just blowing through these uh, floors of the mall. It was crazy. Yeah. And it was a big mall, a lot of stores. And, but it wasn't like the Greenbelt malls in Makati where it's all foofy Louis Vuitton and Prada and all this crazy nonsense high price stuff. It was like a regular mall kind of shops. Yes. Tons of restaurants. I mean, there were so many restaurants in that mall. And uh, there were a lot of tourists, but we enjoyed, we ate there twice, I think, up uh, uh, overlooking. Yeah. And when you were at that tour uh, on the rooftop level, um, people are happy. It's just such a beautiful space. Yeah. We met these bicyclists, uh, and they were oh, all kids. smiles, these teenage boys. They were all smiles, and they were so happy to see a foreigner with mm -hmm. a video camera, Perfect. and they engaged us. And we also filmed looking out over the city. You could see this beautiful lake. Where it is a you know Chrissy wanted to go on the paddle boats and you know, I called it a puddle, but uh, I missed that. I know because it was really a puddle, but uh, from a distance it looked like something. But it was a beautiful park with a nice pond yeah. of sorts, you know, where you could go out and rent a little boat, and beautifully landscaped. And there was a college nearby. And no matter where you are in Baguio, you just got really great weather and great views. Baguio's the richest part of the Philippines outside, outside Metro, Metro Manila. Manila. What's kind of curious is uh, where we live, Cagayandero is the second wealthiest uh, metropolitan area outside Metro mm -hmm. Manila. So first is, you Baguio. would have thought Cebu or Davao, Davao but no, yeah. um, but, and I think all the wealthy people, they have a summer house there in the hills around Baguio. Yes. Um, and uh, like I said, there's a lot of uh, employment there because government ministries, the Supreme Court, you know, the military, mm -hmm. you know, everybody who's smart and uh, maybe no one's watching, they open up an office in Baguio because it's out of the heat and it's really nice and beautiful yeah. up there. So it's a great place to go. Um, you don't see too many expats uh, talking about it as a place to retire, but I think it would be a decent place if, if it wasn't for the traffic. I think mm -hmm. it's just a, and, and I read one comment uh, on a Facebook group where people say, you know, I don't 
get in my car. I'm retired. I don't go out on Saturday. I don't mm -hmm. grocery shop Saturday and Sunday. I don't, I'm not in the traffic and the traffic's not bad and you can pick your time of day, weekdays yeah. to go out. And I think you could make Baguio a very, very nice uh, retirement home. Mm -hmm. We saw a few gated subdivisions that look sort of similar to what we have here in Cagayan de Oro. But for the most part, they're like more traditional homes yeah. uh, built into the hillsides. Um, yeah, that's a signature of Baguio. Like if we're going to see the, the, that um, views in the television, we will know that's Baguio. Because yeah. I think in the Philippines, only Baguio has that kind of houses being built in the hillside. Yeah. And it's very colorful. R really <laughs> interesting, really beautiful. Yeah. I've tried to get this one picture of <laughs> like a thousand homes on the hillside, and I missed it out of the car window. But uh, so our friend Manuel went back to Germany, mm -hmm. and he told us that his five year plan is now a two and a half year plan. Oh. Yeah, because, you know, and I, I thought that was an unusual plan of five years. I, I couldn't stay away from you for five days, so five years, good, good luck. For me. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, you know, he is, his, his uh, fiance is getting her PhD. She's already got two masters, and she needs another two years. And he has to figure out how to transition. He's only 43. He's got to figure out how to transition his life so they can live together full time. Yeah. But he wrote to me, and he's, he's not happy being alone back in Germany. He wishes he was with his fiance. He now has a two and a half year plan. And uh, Peter, uh, has he left and went to Camigan Island for nine days. That's a really um, beautiful white beach, uh, volcanoes, uh, scuba, and it's only a few hours from here. It's yeah. one of the few places we haven't gotten to yet. It's on our list. He had a blast. It was just the quieter uh, pace of life that he was looking for with the white sand beaches. He loved it. Uh, he started uh, vlogging a little bit there. Mm -hmm. And then he uh, went to Bahal. And now he's in Panglao and Alona Beach. And he rented a more powerful scooter, but uh, he got in a little fender bender. <laughs> no harm, no foul, maybe a fat toe. But uh, he uh, bought uh, coffees for the four girls that were in the car that he, he uh, broke the tail light on. <laughs> and uh, he's having his adventures for those who are interested and our, mm -hmm. our subscribers that we went to Baguio yeah. with. It Actually, was a, they're first timers in the Philippines. Both of them first timers in the Philippines. It was kind of an unusual, one, of, one person wrote in Chrissy, like, you guys are nuts. You're letting subscribers show up at your house. It didn't really, you know, it might have appeared that way because <laughs> Manuel's uh, fiance, she just didn't want to be on camera. But Chrissy and Manuel's fiance hit it off uh, and uh, struck up a great friendship. And uh, we, we really enjoyed their company and we invited them down for a few yeah. days and then their, their itinerary kind of got um, crossed up and they ended up staying a couple of days longer. But we enjoyed all of it. And Peter had been one of my consulting clients. He's the longest consulting client I had. And we used to talk every week for 90 minutes mm -hmm. for maybe three months. And we'd gotten to know each other really, really well. And then I actually we'll, call him your boyfriend. Yeah, right, right. So he was my every, so he's, I had a regular appointment with him every Wednesday morning for months. And um, and then we just enjoyed their company. We had gotten to know them so well, and we invited them to stay with us. We don't normally do that. Yeah. Um, and uh, we live in a guard-gated community, and it, it's pretty much impossible to get in the subdivision without uh, you know the guards chasing after you. Mm -hmm. So you know, just to provide a, an answer to that subscriber who thought we were a little yeah, nuts. Yeah. yeah. But we really enjoyed them. And one of the yeah. things about doing this, Chrissy, is our network of friends. Um, you know, I, I experience it a little bit more because um, I consult, you know, yeah. seven to ten times a week. And I at least five to six times I, I feel bad about taking people's money because it, I enjoy that. You know, I really it's like talking to one of the guys I talked to today says, you know, it's sort of like talking to a buddy. Mm -hmm. It's not it doesn't feel like you're, you know, uh, having a consulting call. And I just enjoy it. And sometimes, you know, the people become friends and they want to meet us and, mm -hmm. and we end up meeting them. So yeah. if you're interested in having a big brother who has a Filipina fiance that you want to help iron out some kinks before you get here, kind of make sure things run smoothly or also be available while you're here, uh, we do offer individualized consulting. Fly me to the Philippines at gmail.com. And Chrissy, we are going to next time share a positive expat diary, expat mm -hmm. diary number five. We're going to tell a love story of success and long-term marriage to a beautiful Filipina. He <laughs> met his Filipina. She served him a cup of cappuccino at a restaurant in Cebu City.
And the rest was the history. And the rest <laughs> what you'll find out on the next Expat Diaries, Episode 5. So there you have it, our review of Baguio and our friends, and also our life's journey here in Cagayan de Oro City. See you next time, only here at Fly Me to the Philippines. Hit it. <laughs>